Ladies and gents, yet again, thanks for joining me for a, another Twilight Masquerade opening on release weekend. We're going to get into another booster box. This is booster box number one out of the case that I had received on release day. And, of course, as I said many times, we are going to be completing the master set. So, we're going to get into... This booster box, playing no games, opening up the first pack within the first 30 seconds, and seeing what we can get out of this. The first booster box treated me very well, and then I opened up two more off camera after that, and uh, they were okay. They were okay. Um, I got about 12 hits in each one, no SIR, no gold card but uh, about three art rares and two to three a specs per box. So not horrible. Uh, I might put graphics up on the screen in this video showing you which art rares that I still need and full arts and I needed the caretaker. So pretty happy to see that in the back right there. So. Let's get a sleeve for this so we can put it straight into the binder. Nice. All right. Good start in the second pack right there. I believe I started out with the left side, so I'm probably just going to keep going with the left side of the booster box right here. Let's go a little, little quicker. I think many people have seen openings of this and know what to expect in terms of the commons and uncommons. There are a lot of nice commons and uncommons in this, a lot of playable ones, and the arts look great as well, including the Sicilian Growlithe, which has an art rare in this. Ooh, we <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is stunning. I seen, I seen the borders, and I was like, oh. We're gonna get an SIR, and I was going too quickly, and I got right into it instead of building up the anticipation. Man, uh, this is a really good one. We got a hollow tinglu in the background. Wow, let me get a <laughs> let me get a sleeve for this. This card is stunning, and on a playable card like Blood Moon Earth or Luna, nonetheless, I mean, I'm so happy that <laughs> Ursa Ring got an evolution. Really needed one, and. Uh, Ursaluna in and it itself is pretty great, but Blood Moon Ursaluna, man. Wow. That thing is strong. It's strong in the video game, and it's strong in the TCG, apparently. Because, um, you know, you get to the end game, and you don't even need an energy on that thing to do 240 damage. can knock out a bunch of basics. And, uh... Yeah. That is... We're gonna just keep going here. <laughs> That is, uh, that's really nice. Well, okay. I am happy with this box so far. We have a screen tail EX in the back right there. Put our EX is up over there. Wow, pulling fire right off the bat. Like what else can I expect out of this box? Um, I think this would be even better than the first box that we had opened if we pull, end up pulling a gold card out of this. Imagine if we pulled the, the gold Ursuline out of this. Wow, uh, let me put that up there so like I don't cover it up with uh, my hands when I'm opening up these packs. I'm trying to go at a steady pace here so it's not a forever video. I'm trying to make these a little quicker. Okay, Froki and yeah, the Heliolisk. Awesome, I needed that. Put a sleeve on this. Boy, we are getting the art rares left and right. I have, a, I believe, about half of the art rares in the set now out of, this would be nearly three and a half booster boxes, a Pokemon Center ETB, a few pre-release packs. Um, so I'm pretty grateful for that. Um, but the art rares in this set probably won't be that expensive, other than maybe the Tatsu Gear, which I have a three of now. And I think the most expensive one will end up being the Eevee. I would like to see the Eevee. I don't mind buying 
some art rares if I don't get everything that I need. I know I'm going to have to buy some SIRs at the end. I am overjoyed that I will not have to buy the Greninja and the Ursaluna being among the two most expensive SIRs. My Cargo EX, nice, we needed that. Nice pull. I don't know why it's as rare as it is, apparently, <laughs> in this set, so we'll put that over there. Um, opened up a lot of packs, yet to see that, so I'm pretty glad to see that currently. Alright, so let's see what we got in this pack. And I love just opening up booster boxes and seeing what I can get inside, obviously. I mean, it's probably cheaper to buy the singles. It's always better to, uh, to buy the singles. Especially if you wait a certain period of time, wait for more product to get open, and wait for more of the cars to be put on the secondary market. Nevertheless, it's fun to open this product just because I like seeing all of the cards, getting the commons and uncommons, the reverse hollow, so I don't have to end up buying them off of the secondary market. And uh, it's just exciting to see what you can get in these boxes, uh, to see what, uh, you know, how many hits they can have inside them. And we have another new Ace Spec to add to my collection, the Scoop Up Cyclone right there. And those Ace Specs look really, really nice. So I'm gonna get a sleeve for this. The, soup, uh, the Scoop Up Cyclone will likely find a home in, uh, in Dragapult. I've seen many Dragapult decks running that. You probably see that in Blissey, but you have Sharon's Carry, you don't need to run it in Blissey, so you can run another Ace back, which is pretty cool. I've learned to appreciate Sharon's Care while not really ever using it before I played Blissey because there wasn't really a uh, colorless deck that I had played before. So. I think the only other colorless deck that I had played before, you know, speaking of Blissey, was uh, probably Lugia, which I'll probably play more of uh, in this set because of the introduction of Wellspring Over Pond and the Legacy Energy, which is the other new A spec in this set. So let's see what the left side of the box holds for us as we close it out. We have one more pack after this. We have six hits so far. Maybe we can get, squeeze out one more on the left side and maybe we'll have six or seven on the right side. We shall see, we, ha we do have a hit. We have a Shinistra EX, which also has a special illustration rare in this. Would love to see that, that is a, a very nice one. I just like when you're open up, opening up these packs and you see that, like, you, you, you can see that there's something in the back here. Obviously, it's just a hollow. There's always a hollow in the back. But there's the difference between the SIR bordering than the hollow bordering because it has, like, those glitters and sparkles on it. When you see that, uh, you, know, you know who you're in for, for a treat. And the full arts have a different pattern as well it's kind of like raised edge lines which is really cool we have a new art rare in Torkoal when I first seen this card I was like where where the fuck is the Torkoal I thought those two like uh, holes on a shell were eyes and I was like what am I looking at but it's his shell so I'm gonna get a sleeve for that Tinglu hollow in the back all right. Wow. So I can't. I I, <laughs> I can't tell if that was uh, the last pack on the left side or the first pack on the right side. So we'll go with the first pack on the right side because we ended up pulling that Shinistia on the left side. I know that. All right. See what we can do on the right side. Alakazam Hollow. About the. Uh, the third pack here on the right side, I believe. Hopefully everyone's having a uh, good Twilight Masquerade release weekend. 
and Memorial Day weekend here in the States and obviously wherever else you live. Thanks for tuning in. We got the snow run right there. Frost Last is a fun little tech to run. We have, we have the Hearthstone Ogre Pond in the back there. Put that guy over there. We'd like to get a few more teal masks just to have them because that seems to be a relatively popular card to throw in um, a few decks currently that are being tested in the meta before NAIC. I know Rage Bolt is enjoying having that currently to accelerate the energies so that you can pick up alt codes. I've been watching a few people use that uh, online and uh, in streams and it seems ridiculous, especially with the Professor Sada's I can't remember exactly what the card name is called, but it's the ancient card that can take two energies, I believe two energies, put them on your active Pokemon, and then you uh, draw three cards if you do so, which is, that is ridiculously strong, especially since you can put four of them in your deck and you can pelt that two more into your hand for a total of six in a game. That seems really ridiculous, <laughs> especially since Raging Bolt discards the cards when he uses the attack. We have something in the back right here. All right, so let's 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 see what this could potentially be. I think this is gonna be a full art. I think this might be a terastalized full art right here, um, just because two SIRs in a box, really? <laughs> yes, it is the terastalized um, Greninja, and I'm happy to see the terastalized Greninja. It's the, it's not as, profitable as the Dragapult, obviously, because Dragapult is just uh, the most popular deck in the format currently. I, I need this, like I needed this, so I am so happy to see that. And wow, this box is ridiculous. So in that first box that we opened up, we ended up getting the Blood Moon Ursuline full art. We got the Terastalized full art for Dragapult, and we got the SIR for Greninja. And this is kind of like the reverse of that. Maybe we'll get like a regular Dragapult Terastalize EX card in this. And it'll be like the opposite box. I needed a Blissey. I really did need a Blissey. I think I pulled like maybe one, if that prior to making this video out of all those other products that I'd opened. Um, but I need a few of them if I'm gonna be playing Blissey in local events. And uh, I think I'm planning on doing that. Uh, she's a lot of fun. We got an ace spec and we have survival brace. Speaking of Blissey, this is a great card to put into Blissey. And we have, oh, I thought we had a double banger in the back. I was like, wait, no, the art rares aren't in the hall spot. It can't be. Um, it looked like we had an art rare in the back right there, but it was just the walking wake hollow throwing us off. This is pretty cool. Uh, just so that you don't get O-code on your Blissey. It has 300 HP, so it's relatively difficult to O-code it, but uh, Charizard can O-code if you take a few prize cards. I believe up to four and it has the defiance band on it. No, I think it's three. If you take three and it has the defiance band on it, uh, it could do 300 damage. And obviously, if you take four prize cards, you can do 300 damage. Um, what do we got in the back right here? Oh, I thought we had a little something right there. But that survival brace just allows you to survive with the Blissey EX. Uh, also, like you know, against like um, obviously you can't have any damage counters on it, but you survive against like the Raging Bolt, which is really nice. And there's a lot of other decks that can ramp up damage with the amount of energies that you have on the Pokemon. And a uh, nice little tech is that you have that survival brace on the Blissey AX and then you can share and care the following turn. You put all of those cards back into your hand. You can put another Blissey AX into the active. You can put the survival brace on it yet again, which is really cool. Or you can just put a hero's cape on it, which is also really trolly. <laughs> just give it 400 HP. It's just ridiculous. And then you can just monkey dory, heal it, and then obviously share and care it again. 
All right, I'm going to shut up. I just went on a little rant right there. I'm just really enjoying Blissey EX and the other decks that are coming out of this set. It's just really cool. We had a, another art rare right here. This is our, our third one. Yeah, it's our third one. Wow, okay. We have a Lorian. Uh, yeah, Lor or, La I Iron. I never say its name correctly. So, La Orion. La, La Iron. There you go, La Iron. Just a weird name, but just a weird name in general. This box is really, really good. This box has has cooked it was it spent the allotted time in the oven and this box is is well done if we get another hit out of these last two packs and if it ends up being that dragapult ex man this is uh this is right up there with that first box that we had opened man this is really good we got something in the back but i don't think it's the dragapult i think actually it might be the greninja yep it's the greninja but we still get another hit. Wow, this box is great. I'm gonna put this into a sleeve. I think, I think, I think the uh, Pokemon International is trying to tell me that uh, they want me to play Greninja. Because I ended up getting Greninja out of like every other box that I've opened, as well as the ETB that I opened up yesterday. All right. Anything in the back here? All right, we got a Monkey Dory Hollow, a relatively playable Hollow, so I will uh, not complain about that. Let's get into our hits. All right, here are our hits for the box. Pretty good box overall. I I can't complain. Oops, sorry, got the Shinish in the back right there. Got a lot of cards that I needed. A lot of great playable cards that I needed repeats of. I think all of these art rares were. New art rares for me. New full art for me. New full, full art right there. And this, I definitely need it. And this is gorgeous. I would love... I, I wouldn't even mind to get like a repeat of this. Very, very, very solid box. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I really appreciate it. And uh, have a great day.